perception in this field as a medium is everything. again had to record this twice because my ear rang and then you know something must have happened because when I went to go edit this chunk of the video part of the sound was gone and it was right when my ear started to fucking ring of course so I'm gonna try this again hi guys welcome I'm Emily the fine art medium today's video we're gonna be talking about perception and why you know, some medium, some people might have it in their head that this realm or dimension is a simulation. And I kind of just wanted to talk about that and the different perceptions of mediums. And yeah. So anyway, guys, hi. The thing is, in this line of work, it's all about perception. All right. So if you ever go to multiple mediums and you notice that they say the di like two different things or different things, it's because A, based off of their abilities and how they're receiving information, also kind of correlates with how they interpret that information. Simple as that, right? So many mediums have different abilities and so for example, I'm going to use Chas and I as, you know, the example. So we have our, um, we have pretty much all the abilities, all the clairs, right? However, you know, both of us have main abilities that we primarily focus on. So with her, she's claircognizant and I believe she is Claire voyant as well whereas I am clairsentient and clairvoyant those are my two main abilities so it's like our each of our main abilities are different so the way you know information comes to us is different and our processes of how we, you know, receive and relay that information is different. So I like to write, draw, take notes, meditate. I'll meditate blindfolded most of the time. For whatever reason, when I'm blindfolded, it kind of shuts my regular senses off because I don't like how they can get in the way sometimes and they start making assumptions. It's the ego getting in the way, pretty much. And I hate that, and so I try to block ego things, which eyesight contributes to my ego, right? And that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's just how human works as a whole, right? That's just our nature. We received facts from our senses but when you have to rely on your clear sentence your sentence your clear senses now you're receiving different energetic vibrations through those senses hopefully I haven't lost you yet I know it's a little compl a little complicated but it's based off of energy frequency and what our clairs pick up off of those things so she will receive and she'll receive information a certain way and I'll receive the same information but from a different perspective so it, it adds it it adds different perspectives and different kinds of layering to the same truth and it's actually pretty cool and valuable because you know it's like being validated 
first off, which, you know, is a, always a good feeling, but it also makes you feel like you're not crazy. And it just boosts your confidence too, but th that's the one thing that's really great when you work with other mediums and you learn under other mediums. And it's very important to say too that going along with this, going into this, our minds are usually kind of open fairly, especially if you are a psychic medium, because you don't know what's what until you are taught. Whether you do that through your own research of like reading books, going online and watching YouTube videos of people you vibe with. But this is where it can get tricky because if you follow one person or one source of information, you start putting yourself in a box and I'm guilty for this. And so when I first started out and I was questioning, am I a psychic or am I crazy? I went to the Brenton Lodge, as y'all know, and I started seeing energy grids because I had no, like, I had no teaching whatsoever. So everything was open-minded. Like, there was no teachings or nothing that I learned that built any kind of foundation to say what was what and what it wasn't. So it made it easier for me to see anything and so that's what happened so when I went into the one room I saw the energy grids and the portal of the mirror and I was like whoa what's going on man and when you see stuff like this it makes you think about the whole simulation thing and how everything's just a simulation I can see now where some people get that idea especially if you're somebody with clear abilities or are sensitive in some way and you're receiving energy or you're receiving information from spirit or the collective or whichever source, right? If you see things like that, I can understand why you would assume that we're living in assimilation. However, you got to get your brain out of that. And the other thing is too, when you're online and you get into a certain like, um, niche not niche but like you go down a rabbit hole of sorts of one topic if you keep watching things of the same topic over and over and over again your mind will start to believe in it this is psychology 101 it's like under labeling theory when you tell somebody they're a certain way over and over and over again they start to believe it it's like an indoctrination situation and that's the same thing with you know when you're watching things that are similar and you keep doing it over and over and over again it's like an indoctr indoctrin I can't I can never say that fucking word you know what I mean indoctrination of that thing and this is where it gets tricky so again now we have and again this is an example flat earthers right they'll see something that'll spark interest. They'll be like, wait a minute, yeah, that does make sense. And they keep going along those lines and then maybe they'll start believing it and things start making sense. But also, if they're led down that path, you know, it could be based off of the information that they're receiving and how they're interpreting it. So when you have flat earthers in the simulation thing, it's the same principle, if that makes sense, okay? And I would always say, again, it's always good to find multiple sources of learning because you don't want to put yourself in a box. I put myself in a box because, you know, I found somebody that I thought was a great teacher. And for certain things, they are. I'm not going to argue that. Um, but the thing is, because I didn't look around and research and look at the perspectives of other people, I started following what they were saying. And that kept me from seeing other things. So, it, for example, again, I would only see earthbound spirits and demons. Well, if you're trying to help people in this spiritual field, and you want to help people with hauntings or what have you, right? If you only see part of the puzzle and not the entire layout, you're missing out and you can't be as, you know, 
I can't think of the word. I'm so sleepy. You're not going to be very productive, very helpful, and yeah, you're just missing out on some key information that is preventing you from knowing the whole truth. And so once I got myself out of that box, I can now see things that I never thought I would see. Like a year ago, I definitely did not see back then what I do now. I am seeing friggin' nature spirits. I am seeing like all sorts of non-human things, good and bad. It's not all bad. There's a lot of good. I'm seeing like thought forms. I'm seeing animal spirits. Like I am seeing almost everything. Now, of course, in this field, there are things that we cannot perceive because we're humans and we're not meant to perceive and that is okay because again we're humans and we're not to we're not meant to perceive it so we're not going to see everything now let's talk about interpretation and how that might get screwy and let's be real i've been wrong before because i've misinterpreted information that happens to all of us shit fucking happens you know we're not perfect we're humans you know and so the thing is when it comes to interpretation things get screwy when your ego gets in the way and honestly that's probably the hardest part of giving readings and working on mediumship is the interpretation part you can see things hear things feel things however you receive that information you can do that all day long but it's the interpretation part that's a bitch and I'm not gonna lie that's like sometimes I struggle with that but I've learned if you kick your ego out of the way as much as you can your information will be more accurate and what I like to do and not every medium does this I don't even know any other mediums that do this to be honest but as I've said before in other videos I blindfold myself. I have a blindfold that's special. It's one of those sleeping masks you can get off Amazon. Like, those work really well. And it's one of those ones where the eye cup, like, there's eye cups that detach so you can clean them. It's really cool. But I use that in my channels and meditations, everything. I use it for everything. And I love it so much. Because when I can block out my earthly human senses, then my ego is less likely to get in the way, right? It is, sorry, I'm tired. It is human nature to deduct and reason and rationalize based off of our senses. However, because our clairs are based off of um, energetic vibration, it is different, okay? That's why it's a little, a little harder to, you know, work with. But I've learned that if you can remove your ego, it is easier to relay information. And one thing I will say is when you do your readings and your channeling and always have pen and paper to write it down because it is helpful. And sometimes you'll receive information so fast that you'll forget seconds or a minute later. Write that shit down. Okay? And I can write blindfolded no problem. Now, obviously, the drawing part, if I have to draw faces and shit, I have to, like, look. Because I can't see what the fuck I'm doing. But most of the time, I can just write my notes blinded. As long as I have paper and a pencil, not a problem. So, that is one thing to keep in mind. But, now, let's say you're channeling information about a topic. Let's say you're working on a case, right? A cold case that hasn't been solved. And in this example, a woman gets mugged. And you want to see who the perpetrator is. Or who the suspects could possibly be. Now, Let's say you are clairvoyant. We're just gonna use clairvoyance as the example of the clair being in use because it's the most easy one to describe. Because it's using your clair 
seeing ability. And so, let's say, you know, you have your vision going on. You see a woman walking down the street. You see a guy coming the opposite direction. So she's going this way, he's going this way. In this vision, you see this, like, crossing paths scenario. So you see it, you know what they look like, you confirm that the lady walking is the one you're looking, you're reading for, and then the guy going the opposite direction, you see what he looks like, and you're like, okay, it's this guy. As long as you can find this guy, you got your dude. Well, the thing is, if you didn't see the action of him doing, you know, the crime, you can't straight out say he did it, right? You cannot do that because you didn't see him do it. Now, it could be significant, right? And depending on how your clairvoyance works could depend on a lot of things. So for me, my clairvoyance works when I touch objects because I'm clairsentient. So it works together with my clairvoyance. So I can see the history of an area no prob. So that means I can see everyone who's walked or whatever in an area. So if you're somebody like that, you can see the history, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that person that crossed that person's path is the perp. It just means he walked there because you didn't see him do the action. And this is why, you know, interpretation can get a little cloudy and difficult because it all depends again on how you receive information and yeah but so it's like a police officer when they are getting evidence they're not gonna be like oh he crossed paths with this person so he is guilty no other people could have come in contact with her not just him and it's their job to prove that with the evidence and because you know okay circumstantial evidence i'm pretty sure is inadmissible at court right same thing with it's like the same principle with some of the information that we receive right i keep saying right but i i, I hope this makes sense i feel like it might not to some people but unless you see the person do the action, you cannot infer that they did the action. Because you could just be picking up the history of a location. Um, so, yeah, you can't make inferences or anything. You can only sh say, I saw this person and this person cross paths. This is what they look like. Period. That's where it would end. Period. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? You can't say that person did something when you didn't see the action. And even if you did see the action, because of the whole, you know, there's no scientific evidence, you cannot say for certain that they did it anyway. You can only say, I saw this, and not be like, oh, they did this. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Let me know. If you're confused, let me know down below, please. Please. <laughs> so, I'm gonna end the video here. Hopefully this made sense. If you have any thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, what have you, put them down below. But, before I end this video, I just want to remind everybody, I'm still doing a giveaway when I hit 1111 subscribers, which is 1111, right? I actually have this special edition well it's first edition and it is signed by linda blair has the certification in the back here it's the exorcist book okay i'm calling but um yeah among other goodies and 
it's about over $100 worth of goodies. So, guys, share my videos, like my videos, comment under my videos. We got to get these videos out there so we can get more subscribers so I can do the giveaway. I really want to do the giveaway. God damn it. Help me do this giveaway. Share my videos. Share my content. I need more subscribers so I can do this for you. So I can do this for you. Okay? So, yeah. The book is the main item here. But in this little giveaway, we're going to have crystals. We're going to have incense. We're going to have essential oils. We're going to have bath salts. You name it. It's going to be in there. I'm even going to make some handmade jewelry with the shells that I collected from Long Island, which I actually started cleaning and stuff. And I will be... Um, making them look pretty. It's hard to see with the lighting in here, but I'm going to clean these up, shape them, and they're going to look freaking mint, bro. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay safe, stay well, and peace out.